What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another live stream here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. Of course, we have none other than the one and only Mr. Robert Lupton <laughs> with FlipAquatics.com. So, of course, I was here at, with the Ohio Cyclist Association Extravaganza. It's their 24th year marking of that event. Is it their 24th year? It year? was. So, yeah, That's it was insane. a phenomenal uh, event, a phenomenal turnout. Um, they did their, of course, their awards, uh, award ceremony yesterday. And uh, the auction didn't look too bad. I did uh, get out of there a little bit sooner just because of travel. It's about a five and a half hour commute back. And uh, just want to make enough time there to be able to get back at a reasonable time. And I quick went through about 1030 this morning. They had um, uh, where they opened up the tables. They kind of blocked it off uh, through pre-registration, which is a little bit different. But I understand from being, you know, chair and, and chairman and operating different uh, things like that with regard to like a club and make yeah. sure that everything runs smooth. But in all, I would say it was a it was a very decent turnout. It's a huge auction. Yeah, man. there's quite a few people that turned out. Uh, Bags-wise, it looked to me as I quit scan through, it was quite uh, um, busy at the time. But with that being said, I mean, I couldn't tell you. My guess would be, you know, people could filter in up until like, I want to say cut off as maybe um, 11 o'clock. I think it was actually noon where people could still come in and bring yeah. bags to, to put through the auction. But with that being said, I mean, overall, uh, it was a decent turnout. It's not a huge, huge auction. I'm, I'm used to, you know, yeah. our auction, we we run over a thousand bags. You know how they do it? It's it's fish only, and they charge you per bag that you put in. Yeah, which is different. So it's like, I, I forget how much it is, but say it's like $3. Yeah. So no matter what, if you put in the bag, you're Correct. paying $3 per bag. Correct. So and they do that because they try to discourage people from bringing like a hundred bags and stuff. Exactly. Like they only want the good stuff. Yep. And that's why, of course, uh, that's that's a very valid point. I mean, that that is why uh, the reduction you're going to see um, with that ratio as far as how many bags actually come through because for a certain species or certain family of fish where you're not just bringing the live berries and all this other stuff, um, it looked like, I think we lost camera. Oh, we did this camera. Don't let's see. Uh, oh, all right, you guys took it, it back. What does it say? Hang on, so it doesn't take the camera. Isn't that weird? All right, you guys. So you can hear just bear <laughs> with us. This is the <laughs> choice. We're just gonna do a a blank live stream. This is new, isn't it? Uh, just bear with us. We're That's running into hilarious. some technical difficulties. I may have to shut the stream down and reboot it. I've only had this happen on my end a couple of times. So let me unplug it back in. So we're gonna give it a, a test. Uh, do you see audio is coming through? So just bear with us. I do apologize about that. Sorry, guys. Did you stop it? You still got it going. No, it's still going. Yeah, I wonder why it did that. Camera problems. Little booger. Um, don't mind me. <laughs> what do you think of the tour so far? Jeremy, has it changed a lot? You're all oh, here in the warehouse? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I definitely encourage you guys to check out. I know that you were doing like, um, like a little mini series as far as like a, the build progress. And, um, so I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. And at some point uh, later on, if you guys are watching this as a replay, um, I'll go ahead and add that information for you guys down in the description so you guys can check out some of those videos and kind of see how things have evolved. I mean, from being here last year, um, much has evolved. Look at that, dude. Uh, there we, we're, we're back. back. Whoa. That USB port stopped working for some reason. So, yeah, I mean, fixed it. Awesome stuff. The the first thing I want to really talk about, and let's just dive into it, is this, what is it, 480 gallon here behind us? It is a 480 gallon. So, walk us through, like, the, besides, before we get in the aquascape and, and all of that, I'm just wondering dimensions wise. Because, Looking at it here in person, you guys, 
All right, let me put it to you this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here. So I'm about five eleven, and of course, kind of rule of thumb is you stretch out your arms that way. That's kind of gives you, you know, some sort of a perspective of how big this thing is. It's massive. It's definitely a big tank. It's four feet by eight foot by two foot, and it has a seventy five gallon sump on it. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a big boy. I love it though. Finally, all the plants are finally starting to grow in. Like I'll, I'm gonna be doing an update video on it soon. But like all the crypts lost their old leaves and they just have their new leaves now. All the moss is finally starting to grow on it, so you don't see the um, the glue anymore. But you still see it in some places, but for the most part, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's it's, co it's coming together. So it, it's definitely you guys did it. Now it was you and Mike that. That escaped this, right? It, it was, I, I don't want to take any credit for it. Mike did 99.9% .9 of all the work. I did 0.01%. Hey, I, you do. I basically, well, I, I, got, I got him everything he needed, dumped in the gravel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah the, the overall depth of view and everything, I mean, just from a visual perspective, even when you're looking at it down from this way, but especially sitting at your desk, I mean, it's just. And my desk is my favorite view of this. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I think I want to Go put ahead. a ton of big plants in the back. Sure. Um, which there's a ton of like, um, what is it, the lilies, mm -hmm. the dwarf lilies. Sure. There's some swords and stuff back there. But I want to get some uh, some real big stuff going back there. Are you hoping to get some flowering? Some what? Part? Some flowering uh, along the back and actually get some, some shoots up through the back. I mean, that I didn't really thought about it, to be honest. Um, the dwarf lilies started to put these um, these long ones up to where yeah. they're hitting the surface, which I think is is pretty cool. I was trimming them back, and I was like, you know what? It kind of does look cool. Yeah. And I don't need a lot of light on all the plants that I chose, so if it does grow up there and take over the surface, I think it would look pretty sweet with a bunch of little runners. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fun tank. It's, it's cool to have it in here. It's not very loud, um, which a lot of people do ask about that. No, it's not loud at all. So I, I like it. Yeah, that's nice. Um, nice, um, nice stand. I mean, obviously very sturdy. You know, I think I don't like about it. I mean, they, they made some like airs on it. Like, yeah. you can see how this is like a different color. Yeah. Where they like try to sand it down and then sure. they, they fix it. Um, now, do you have like a um, sturdy that's going to be going around with it too? Yeah. So Andrew from Mad Tanks, if you know him. Okay. He's, uh, He's gonna make like a really really nice, um, in, like in, I don't know if embroidered is the right word, um, but it's wood. Yep. And he's gonna build it so it goes around, and then it's gonna be carved into it like my logo, oh, yeah, other sure. people's logos, and it's gonna be cool. So he he's really excited about it. He he was actually gonna come up this weekend, but I told him he was too busy. Gotcha. And so hopefully he'll come up next weekend or something like that. Well, actually, next weekend's Thanksgiving, so that probably won't fly with the wife. Nice. Yeah, the wells are too bad. No, no, they're not bad at all. They're not terrible. Um, yeah, they, they just made some mistakes with the tank. Like, right here, you can tell they actually broke the tank. Like, maybe they dropped it or something. Yeah. Um, like, there's a big scratch right there, a yeah. big one right there. And then they actually cut a piece out. And they I can see it. that, yeah. So, like, once you start really looking at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's not good. Now, well, the screen, then you bring the screen, it up. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to bring it up to the right, probably right in here. So... Yeah, really You'll good. never see it. Yeah. But, but you're always going to know in the back of your mind. Yeah, it just sucks that I have to do that to hide yeah. errors that shouldn't be. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Acrylic Creations did it. They did, they did a pretty good job. Um, I, I in, in, in their defense, I haven't told them that I was unhappy with it. Okay. So, they, they I, once I tell them, they might be like, oh, like, we're really sorry. Like, we'll make this right. Yeah. Or they can just be like, oh, no, that's, that's what you get. So, I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not happy with it. How it turned out. Sure. Oh, it's, it's, it's a like sweet it. tank, and yeah. Yeah. I love what's in the inside, and that's what people are going to be focusing yeah. on. And so it'll work out. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what's going, what's going into the tank. So we're going to be putting in ten thousand blue bolts. It's actually going to be more than that, but I just say ten thousand. My goal is to add one thousand per month for a whole year, um, because you don't want to just put ten thousand in there. Then there's going to be a huge spike in ammonia. Oh yeah, and like you know, the tank's just not ready for that. So we're just yeah. going to do a consistent thousand every month for okay. a whole year, and then uh, and then at the end of the year, I want to do a video that says a uh, hundred thousand dollars worth of strength in the tank. 
because we retail them for like nine ninety five. Yeah. And so if we have over ten thousand there sure. at ten dollars a piece, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars worth of stretch. Which is crazy. Do you plan on putting uh, nano fish in at some point? Do you envision that? In the um, I would say it's definitely down the road because we, we plan on stocking them and selling them. Yeah. So it only makes sense to eventually put them in there. Um, but we'll probably keep it stripped only for probably a year and a half or so. Sure. No, it's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah again, I just I want to give you guys a little bit of a visual perspective here. Um, just size comparison wise, I mean what you guys think it looks big here in person. I mean it's it's massive. It's a it's a monster. I mean that's that's like a mini swim. <laughs> yeah. Like I could I could probably swim in there. Me and Jeremy could probably swim oh, in there like, at the same time. Yeah. It'd be it'd be a little crammed though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um so any questions you guys uh obviously here go ahead and you can pick um <coughs> rob's brain anything to deal with shrimp uh if you have any questions with that regard i i believe that you're running some specials currently so if you guys are looking at uh, i want to say it's your starter packs yeah can you tell them a little bit about what you got going on so not not a sales pitch but kind of a, i guess it's kind of a sales pitch yeah no yeah i'm yeah, just <laughs> I want you guys to know because yeah, there, there's yeah. a nice trip. So, so we are doing um, twenty percent off all shrimp starter packs, which it comes with either ten or twenty shrimp, and then it comes with uh, six months food supply for the shrimp, the shrimp net, and indie nominal leaves. Um, and then you can pick whichever one you want. Twenty percent off of that, and the discount code for it I think is shrimp starter packs with an S, and then twenty. Um, and twenty is the number, not the word, and it's all one consistent word. Okay. So shrimp starter packs one. Nice. And here I'll just type it in. I'll type it into the chat so you guys know. All right. So let me scroll up here. Just bear with us, you guys. Um, I apologize on my behalf if I have a little bit of lack of energy. Uh, I did a live stream out of the hotel yesterday. I see a few of you guys there last night, so I appreciate that. And um, but yeah, running on. About two hours of sleep in the last four days. So, um, let's see here. Kang's in the house. What's going on, Kang? Kang Lee. Mr. Twin City Guppies. Did you know it's Twin Cities Guppies? I know, I keep saying Twin Cities. Dude, I was too. I even put it on the t-shirt. I, I know what it is, like, oh. but I, I keep saying it wrong. It messed me up. Yeah. Yeah, I felt really bad. Because it's like legit right there in my face. Cities. <laughs> it's so hard to say. Because <laughs> you just think Twin City Guppies. Yeah. Twin Cities Guppies. Hey, KG. Let's see. But yeah, so how was the OCA? So overall, it was busy. Uh, the main thing with stuff like that is you have to keep in mind there's a lot of time that's devoted and I give a lot of credit to those um, members and those who are part of the OCA um, and board members and just knowing being on a board myself and being a big proponent and advocate for clubs and the importance of clubs working in unison and harmony with local fish stores and individuals like Rob and stuff like that. I feel in the end, everybody works together for the greater good of the hobby. Uh, that's much better for everybody long term. Absolutely. Um, rather than looking at it from like a competitive point of view. Of course, you have to make money at the end of the day. I get it. Um, but what I respect is the fact that I didn't see a ton of drama out of it. Of course, you're going to have some individuals like they're just going to complain to complain. Um, but overall, I mean, these oh, are. Really? So there's some decent drama going on? Not a lot of drama per se, just kind of a couple of individuals want, I didn't bring anything. So let me back up. I didn't bring anything myself, which was uh, felt really almost like naked in a sense where the one time of doing something like this, I didn't bring anything to stop. I didn't set up like a little mini fish room in the hotel room. So it was just like, yeah. I enjoyed just going and that was my intent to go um, to just kind of, that was my first time going to the OCA. Um, I, I, unfortunately, a few members of our club, my club, which is the Grand Valley Aquarium Club in Grand Rapids, Michigan market, 
weren't able to make it. Uh, they weren't sure at the beginning if they're able to make it, even when I made the reservation and I went ahead and booked things and, and so you were hoping people were coming with you. Yeah, but there's enough people I knew through uh, not only through YouTube, but just being in the hobby for a long time. I mean, you just learn to know people. So it's nice. Yeah. It's not like you just show up there and you don't know anybody. So um but yeah, I mean I appreciate anybody coming up. Uh anybody that's been following my channel for any period of time, I definitely I can't thank you guys enough. I mean for me I'm just a hobbyist at heart. I'm, I'm just I, I enjoy the interaction. What you see is what you get. I think most people can contest to that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I definitely, um, that encouraged me that, that individuals are coming up and they, yeah. um, that they enjoy the content and like picking my brain and stuff like that. So yeah. I just enjoy providing some insight and inspiration for you guys um, when it comes to the hobby. I mean, my biggest thing that people know me for is a lot of diversification when it comes to many different bringing aspects of the hobby. So, um, but yeah, that's what keeps me driving forward. I guess with that, uh, any, any words of wisdom or advice, I know that's something that you oftentimes ask, uh, in a sense, and I'm paraphrasing, I know it's not your exact phrasing, but where you're at, at this point from a business concept, people that want to go out there and pursue a lifelong dream like you guys did you know years back you had in you had a vision and you seen it through and you continue to see it come to fruition i mean do you have any words of advice for other individuals that may be looking at doing something yeah whether if they're in the u.s or if they're outside the country i mean so first of all let me say hi to flynn i saw flynn in here what's going on flynn uh flynn put out a flynn, i actually really liked your video today i watched it i even commented on it so shout out to flynn's fish forms um, but as far as advice, if I'm just going business-wise, um, somebody that wants to do what I'm doing, I would highly recommend them to start on social media um, because I think the world is changing so quick that if you're not on social media, like you, you, no matter what you're doing now, in 10 years if you're not on social media, you're not going to be able to do what you're doing. You're at least not going to be able to make money now. Sure. And so I would encourage everyone to get on social media in one way or another. It doesn't have to be on YouTube. It could be on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. It could be whatever. Just start building that community around you um, because community is everything. Absolutely. Um, the people that support you are everything. The people that you're helping, like it all goes back to that community. And if you don't have that community, um, I just don't think you can get anywhere. In yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so that's really important now. And then the other thing on business, um, if I was someone just started in it, I would pick a focus and do that focus 100%. And so, like, whether it's a pistos or, or one type of shrimp, like, if I could go if I could go back in time and start from the beginning of where I started, I would pick, like, three types of shrimp, and I would breed the living daylights out of those shrimp and sure. be the expert at those three shrimps so that whenever someone was like, hey, I want to get crystal reds, they'd be like, Rob's the guy. He breeds thousands of crystal reds. Like, you got to talk to him. Sure. And that's how you get your name out there. And once your name is out there, then you can start growing um, Absolutely. But if you're just the guy that is a collector that breeds a thousand different things, um, then you know you're never really gonna exceed in a business sense because you're always gonna be out of stock. And that's the problem that I ran into is I collected every type of shrimp I could, and then I could never breed enough to sell enough to really get out there. Yeah. And so many people would get upset with me because they're like, "Hey, we want to buy, but you're always out yeah. of stock." Like, what business does that? Sure. And I was just like, "Man, like I need to change something." That's yeah. why. I, one of the reasons I started importing because like I just couldn't make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, since it is my, my channel here, I'm, I'm not going to go on full on Rambo, but just from being in the hobby since 1990, more or less myself and dealing with shrimp. One thing I want to put the rest is, is the, the hype put behind the basis of importation. They're doing it right. A lot of people are doing it wrong. Bottom line is I've seen the process. I'm not being paid for by sponsored by it's nothing like that. And regardless of a friendship relationship, when I started seeing a lot of those issues kind of stem from that, it's like you're taking the right steps. I personally have paid for myself and have obtained actually when one of your your very first import or your Neocaridinia heteropoda, the carbon release strain, the yeah. most prolific strain out of any shrimp lineage I've ever had. I've never had one death, not one. That's crazy. And as long as you put the time into them, uh, yeah, they can throw different uh, 
variance here and there, but hey, for the most part, they're breeding true, but that's kind of besides the point. From a house standpoint, no issues. That's awesome. And that's because you guys took the right steps. Yeah. Anyway, so. That's cool, man. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hey, everyone's comment on the shirt. Oh, yeah. Did you still want to give one of these away? Let's do it. So these are the fish tube shirts, and I want to say it was, is it Kasha is the one that kind of came up with No, the... Kasha 100% came up with it. Okay. So 100%. I'll give her all the credit. All right. All right. She's awesome. Let's talk about these shirts a little bit, because I've even when I've had that shirt on, you actually brought me the shirt when he was at the talk, and I have to admit, I have failed to actually upload. So anybody <laughs> right now in chat, there's 44 of you guys watching. When this is done, and you guys are watching this at this point, thank you, um, up to this point uh, as far as watching live stream, I want you to hold me accountable that I'll actually get that talk out for you guys. So there isn't a lot of video, I don't think, of actual talks when it comes to like shrimp breeding per se no, out no, no. there on the platform. So I do need to get that uploaded for you guys. And the reason I did it was there's a few folks through our local club uh, through the Grand Valley Aquarium Club that wanted to see it. So I do have it. It's just a matter of taking the time to actually um, get it uploaded for you guys. And not too much editing involved with it. Uh, it was a great turnout. Um, I know a lot of people enjoyed it. We're very appreciative. He ended up sending us, um, you know, his company uh, ended up sending us, uh, which was very, very generous um, in a decent turnout with our rare fish auction. So we're very appreciative of that. And, and they again, did pretty good? Yeah, they turned out well. People good. really enjoyed them. That's yeah, really yeah. They're I I see on the Grand Valley uh, Aquarium Club Facebook because of course I'm a I'm one of the admins on there. So every once in a while I see popping up, just kind of giving updates, and it's cool to see. Yeah. Good. So yeah, they're doing really really well. But getting back to the shirt, I want to say I don't know if I was the first one to wear it on like a live stream per se, even a video. But I want to say it was that next day maybe that I end up representing the, the fish tube shirt. You, I, you were the first person other than me that got to, the to get it. So that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this was at originally, was it Akashel in Chicago, Illinois area back in. Thanks Priscilla. What, back in August or something like that was originally where. Yes. That was, was the first one. All right. Can, since she's not here, can you talk a little bit about the concept? I mean, the fish tube do you know like the basis behind it i don't know like much of the background behind it so so what happened was um <laughs> the aquashella and uh, aquatic experience both were like hey we want to do something bigger this year we want you to be a part of our show um aquatic experience we were already a part of it but they wanted to like do something bigger so they gave us more space this year um aquashella is actually a show put on by uh, George, which is Squirrelfish 12 g is another YouTuber, and also Sean Hale, who is um, uh, higher up in the company at Fritz. And so those two are like really good friends, and they brought they came together and got the show going. Uh, George is on the saltwater side, so he knows all the saltwater YouTubers and a lot of saltwater vendors, and neither one of them knew a lot of freshwater people. And so they really wanted to in, like get freshwater a part of their show. And so they reached out to me, and they're like, hey, we, we'd love to bring your like a fish tube boot to the show if you can, sure. if you can do that bring some freshwater people in and you'd be like the guy to get the freshwater people there. Nice. And, uh, and so I was like, you know what, that's, that sounds good. And so I was like, it'd be really cool if we had like a shirt um, to give away because Corey at Aquatic Experience gave away red t-shirts with the um, Aquarium Club logo on them. So I thought that was a really cool idea. So I was like, it'd be cool if there was a shirt that had all of our names on it sure. instead of just one person's name. Got it. And so I really wanted to get everyone involved. And originally what we were going to do is everyone that came was going to like pay a portion of the shirts yeah. and then we were gonna just give them away or we were gonna charge enough that we could all like make our money back that we put into it yeah and uh and what happened was i couldn't coordinate it quick enough so i ended up just paying for them um and then kasha was like hey like i'll create a design for you so she actually came up with like a creative like aqua shell design with everyone's name in it um which is just cool so i just wanted to do like a different logo for every single event and then the fish tube was actually supposed to be the back of the shirt. And then I was just like, Kasha, we need something that like is just unique. And she's just like, oh, like, I don't know. And then she came up with this and she's like, I don't really like it, but you know, here it is. Sure. And I was like, Kasha, 
I love it. Like I absolutely, I loved it so much. I'm like, we're putting that on the front, and everything else can be on the back. Okay. And so is Dave. Like it's such a simple logo, but it, it's so. I, it's, I just love one it. or two people wearing that at the OCA. I, no way. Yeah, they're wearing the fish you, suit. No, so, uh, yeah. dude, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so at first, like the whole idea behind the shirt was to, to like charge a little bit or give them away. Sure. Um. And so the first set of shirts went really good. I still got a ton left. I ended up just paying for them all, Okay. Um, which is fine. And so now what we're doing is we're getting sponsors for the fish tube booth. Okay. Um, because Kosh came with logos, that's how we're kind of like incorporating the whole fish tube. Yeah. Um, so sponsors will pay for the shirt and then um, we'll give it away for free and give people an opportunity to donate for the shirt. So they can, they can just take it for free. They can donate a dollar. They can donate $20. Yeah. And then that money that they donate, we're going to donate to um, a charity, whatever the charity nice. is. Yep. And so every event is going to have a different logo on the back. So like the hardcore fans that come to every show yeah. are going to be able to get a shirt at every show and like collect them all. And so that's the whole principle about it is we want them to come out to every show and hang out with us YouTubers. Nice. And then also we want, as YouTubers, as fish to we want to give back to the community in a way of like sponsoring like the cares program or doing things like that, that we can just Got donate it. all the money. Sure. And so it's oh, been awesome. A, it's been really that's cool. cool man. Man. Yeah. yeah. It's cool to see what, how things have evolved in the community. Absolutely. Um, all right. So let's see here. It looks like uh, Keith said that uh, he obtained some crystal red shrimp. It looks like, and everything showed up really good color and pattern. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Especially with how cold it's been. Let's see. Thank you so much, Candy, and all the moderators, as always, uh, dropping the links. So yeah, yeah thank definitely, you, Candy. definitely take advantage of it. Check it out. Is there Look now? What Priscilla said, "You see that? She's calling me out." Rob looks like he needs a nap. Thanks, Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, did you say that there was an expiration coming up? I would imagine on the twenty percent. It's yeah, I think it expires on Wednesday. Okay. And then Thursday we're gonna start um, our like Black Friday sale. Oh, got it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, if you see anything that pops out, just let me know. And again, you guys, um, it's going to let me really scroll up so far. So if there is anything in specific that uh, you'd like to ask, uh, either him or myself, feel free to go ahead and put it. Um, in the chat, I want to say we've been going, not quite sure. I don't Please have that, forward. that page up, but kind of getting to that point of wrapping things up here. I want to thank you guys very much for, of course, as always for the support, uh, speak on not only on behalf of myself, but any, anybody that puts out any form of content. Um, I, I know that we generally are all very appreciative, um, no matter what the, that, that content creator puts out. Yeah. So. You see what Priscilla said? She's still she's trolling. Such, she's such a troll. Rob always needs a nap. The more tired he gets, the funnier he is. That is very out. true, though. Because I get pretty uh, loopy. Um, all right. You guys should make a shirt that says Shrimpstagram. Shrimpstagram. Shrimpstagrammers. Oh, I love that. Dude, that is Did hilarious. Did you see that? Shrimpstagrammers. Shrimpstagram. <laughs> That's funny. That is hilarious. That is a great idea. All right, so MPOW9, so Mike is wondering as far as the rarest. I didn't stay, unfortunately, for the auction. I know that there was a, see the thing is you guys, I'm not, call me old school, I'm not sure. I do feel old, um, not only physically, emotionally, but I'm mid thirties now, so I'm, I'm getting up there. But four kids and 14 years of marriage. Well, Oh, that's I'm not happily married. <laughs> so, but uh, with that being said, um, completely lost my train of thought. Again, I'm running out of like Sorry, two and a half, man. three hours of sleep. But uh, no, it wasn't from that. <laughs> he totally made it. You made, <laughs> yeah, you made it basket. Trash can's like two feet away. I don't even know where I was even going with that. What was I even saying? Oh, the uh, rarest. I look at it more as something that you don't see as common in the hobby. And that would be... A specific uh, lineage of uh, Uraru, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, running on like very limited fumes. Um, so I don't unfortunately remember, but I would say out of anything that's, that uh, stood out to me uh, at the OCA would have been that 
uh, specific uh, species. But other than that, there wasn't really anything that I haven't you there know, wasn't anything come across at some point in the hobby before. before. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if they have like the true Synodontis granulosus, I've talked about that before. It's almost like a jet black with some white, um, uh, some white on it uh, on the finish. But I mean, it, that's an awesome specimen. I've yet to ever really see ever one of those in person, a true one. Um, but pretty much all of those are imported. They're, they're wild specimens, anyways. I don't know if it's documented here in the U.S. of anybody, to my understanding um capitally uh breeding those but that would be a that'd be like a bucket list fish of mine that yeah. i may obtain someday and and maybe put the time to breed them. try to breed it yeah they're cool. really neat they're neat Thanks a lot of people ask when i'm gonna be putting shrimp in here um i'm actually gonna put some in probably tomorrow um, i'm gonna put in some actually i won't tell you it's a secret i guess okay well it's not really a secret but <laughs> you'll you'll see the video All so right. we're adding some tomorrow and then we're gonna add some every month for a whole year uh, and then we're going to slowly build out. We don't just want to put a ton of shrimp in there and have a ammonia spike and then kill everything. Sure. So yeah, we want to do it somewhat spread out. And I still got to get more. I, well, I got to get the biological filtration going. Yeah. Um, I have a matten filter in there, but that's not nearly anything enough to, to produce. Got it. Cheer that thing. What is it? There's gunshots going on out there. We're in the hood. Oh, <laughs> right up my alley. <laughs> yeah. Pun intended. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> um all right so priscilla is wondering if i'm going to aqua shallow obviously i wouldn't be going to the one in texas um possibly the one in illinois i'm not 100 percent yet i want to say what when is that in august probably around the same time as last yeah, year yeah, it's i was able to make it to the one last year so i mean i've had individuals ask i, I know a lot of individuals wonder if, if we were coming to ae that's just such a trip um yeah you know out that far in but yeah so i'll try to make it to the aquashella but again i can't can't make any promises that's so far out i mean it is. that's months away yeah. what's up jason jadrian aquatics jason's awesome yeah so if you guys want uh decals i, I don't want to put uh jadrian jadrian aquatics on the the spot but uh, i want to say that he is still offering those possibly i know at one point you did a video and that was some time back i want to say it was like a bag of plants or something like that for if you're looking for decals of you know people in the community uh so let us know um jason here in the chat and if you have a link uh since you're a mod you can go ahead and link it up Flynn said i'm excited for chicago i'm 90 percent sure i'm going well, now that Brendan's going, now I have to go. You have to go. No, I got to go now. Listen, so Chicago Aquashella might be like our big event of the year for YouTubers. Yeah. Um, I know some YouTubers were really sad on at Chicago, or not Chicago, New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, for the way that some fish were treated. Mm -hmm. And so like there was like supposedly some fish that got thrown away, and people had to like get them out of the trash and take them home. And so they really didn't like that. Wow. Um, so there's just some questionable things that happened yeah. that we're still trying to figure out what really okay. happened. And so a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to go back to there. And so it, the way it's looking, um, Chicago will be our big event next year. Nice. And uh, that's awesome. And it's really cool because Aqua Shell is put on by another YouTuber and Sean. Yeah. And so it's like they're two great guys that are really easy to work with. Yeah. And so they've been very supportive of the, the YouTube slash fish sure. YouTube. Sure. And uh, they're really willing to like do something big this year. And, That's awesome. And give us even a budget. And yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So I'm super excited. Awesome. Um, awesome. A lot of other YouTubers are coming. Hopefully you're coming. Yeah, I'll, like I said, I'm not, definitely I'm gonna try to make it. It's always you know my intent um, to to go. But now that Brendan's going, uh, you must have to come. No, no, I gotta come. <laughs> <laughs> That's what about an hour and a half from you. Uh. A little over three hours, about three. Is it three hours? hours? Yeah, yeah. No, so it's not really too hard. too terribly bad. Uh, we got Brandon Maple Street Aquatics. How you doing, buddy? Uh, let's see. Somebody said Bob really made it public about the animals. Uh, he probably did. Did he? Hashtag bad Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob really he he, he puts his feelings out there, which is good. You always know what he's thinking. Okay. I try to keep I'm, him more I'm behind uh, in the. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know it either, okay. so I'll have to go look for that. All right. 
Probably one of his live streams. Uh, let's see. See, even with Priscilla, she'd rather go to both Bacuachelas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Texas is actually close to Priscilla, I think. Haven't. Me, Mug, Aquatics haven't called a Sergeant Tank live stream in ages. Like, so finally catch one. Well, I appreciate it very much. Um, did you switch your your channel name? I have a feeling that you had a previous channel name, but. Jason, Jason has a good idea. He said he'd be willing to do a bunch of free prints for Aqua Show to Texas, the Dallas show, because he really wants to see it succeed. So I'm guessing, actually, Jason is from Texas, isn't he? Yeah. He's not near there. He's in Texas. Yeah. So that would be huge. Jason, we'll definitely talk about well, that. Texas, I mean, that's a massive state. Well, it, it, yeah, it, I'm it, not sure where. It I, can, I can't remember where. He can fit a couple of Ohio's in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, so Devin is wondering, so what would you do in a guppy and placo and shrimp tank in a 20-gallon, if I want to breed shrimp in there, how would you set it up, and what shrimp would you advise on eco food? Eco complete, I would probably do a Neo Caradina. Um, and it, it really depends on your water. So I tell everyone, like, you can tell me what your tank is, and it means nothing until I know what your GH and your KH is. Uh, those are the two parameters that I can guarantee you will make the biggest impact on shrimp. Um, so I always say test those. That's number one, knowing what your GH and KH is. Uh, but generally, on tap water with Eco complete, um, you can you can do most neo caridina unless your water is like way off one way or the other, uh, which again comes back to the GH and KH test. But I would probably do fancy blues. Those seem to be extremely hardy and they breed almost ninety nine percent true and they're very prolific. Um, so the, and, and they sell really well. So if you're looking for something to sell, I always go with fancy blues, just because you'll never never not. Oh yeah, blues are like in every market. Yeah, they're oh, like yeah. a gold mine. Just yeah, I, they're I so agree blue. with more. Like yeah. you look at them, they're just whoa, blue. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's another question here. And again, you guys, if we miss a question, just put at, and that will highlight it specifically if you're on like a desktop computer. It's a little bit different when you're on a mobile device. But if you just put at like Sergeant Tank, or put at Flip Aquatics, or whoever you're trying to highlight, then it'll pop up for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's easier for us to see. Yeah. Pops up in red. Uh, oh, uh, so any crystal red shrimp breeding tips? Uh, crystal red. The biggest thing would be only have GH in your water, because that makes it easy. Um, I would definitely use RO water and remineralize it. The next thing is you have to have a buffered substrate. So I would either go with a fluval shrimp stratum or bright well. Um, either one of those will work great. And if you do those two things, you'll have success. Just follow the basic principles of mixing like salty shrimp remineralizer with RO water and you're good to go. Um, don't do crazy water changes, don't overfeed. Just keep it the bare minimum. If, as long as you have the right substrate and the right water, you're good. You're good, you're good, you're good. And those I, are two big things. And ideally, I, uh, would be temperature would be the most like to me besides that would be like I don't know for you I, I enjoy most shrimp right around that like almost like even 68 with them I I found it oh, the past yeah. um, specifically with Caradina and then even Neos like my sweet spot for breeding those through the years like 72 yeah so I don't know if that's yeah we keep all of our rooms between 68 and 72 you know how things can evolve with yeah certainly Limited. We definitely don't don't go don't go hotter than seventy two. No, because things can really go wrong. Yeah, I know that from experience for sure. I mean, there's a lot of people in the Dallas area. That's going to be a good show. Uh, let's see. Did Rob sell anything at the show you guys just went to? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't even know they weren't able to make it. Sorry, it's a two part question here, and wonder if I no, I didn't bring anything to sell. Uh, I was saying that earlier on. It was nice to be able to go to an event like this without having that obligation to set anything up. Again, when you guys go to stuff like this, um, besides like the, uh, you know, like aquatic experience, that's more vendor related. But when you go to like an OCA or like a, um, uh, like American Library Association, any of those type that are more geared specifically towards hobbyists in that sense, like hardcore fish breeders, 
that's why I was just, I, like I was saying earlier, I almost felt naked because I breed a lot of different species and I do enjoy to distribute those and offer them to other hobbyists. Um, but just the amount of time that goes into setting up because basically you set up an entire mini fish room within your hotel room and then the hotel will allow you to go ahead and do that, which is awesome too. So you have to have a good relationship with the hotel because they legit have to go back and they have to actually clean the carpets, um, like oh, yeah. shampoo carpet clean. And so, I mean, they're, they're opening up as well, um, you know, from that point of view. So, yeah. It's a great show. It sucks that I can't make it because it's yeah. only an hour away. And there's a lot of work that go into putting on something like that. Oh, so my gosh. There's a ton of work. Uh, Brendan is wondering tips on breeding bristle nose. I got two males and a female. Uh, let's see here, thirty bucks or something, pretty good deal. I'm hoping to breed them. Might do twenty nine. The main thing is just consistency and water changes. So the main thing is I talk about with the overall uh, pheromones, the hormones that are released within the water. Um, it's without nerding out on this too much. I've talked about it in great detail uh, before uh, on various videos here on my channel but they will ultimately stunt the growth to basically where the pheromones and hormones relieve a certain amount of toxins that basically deplete that growth cycle to where they no longer want to grow in a sense. That's like the easiest way I can put it. So the main thing is consistency to keep up. And then as far as feeding, I just utilize and, you know, me personally, I like French style green beans. I get them from Aldi. Uh, they're the cheapest. You can go to other places. And you get them for like what, 50 cents of them? Oh, cheaper than that. Yeah, it's like yeah. 40 cents. Um, sometimes you, you can get them on sale. I just get them by the flat. And uh, yeah, so other than that, um, I don't have any available on my website, but I do custom make. I uh, just haven't got around to. I do it usually when people do it, like on pre order basis. And it's a concept idea that I incorporated many years back is basically, um, and I can link this for you guys down in the description later on. So you guys can check it out if you want to check out that video. Uh, but what it allows for like a reverse trio, but if you're getting into, if it's your first time getting into breeding Plecos, they're not difficult at all to breed. Uh, the main thing is just make sure that they're mature enough um, and give them the basic requirements. A certain portion of calcification is good um and then uh you know just standard uh oxcaping and decor uh, i don't personally use like any type of art of like artificial type of stuff like plants put natural vegetation in there um give them enough cover and give them options especially if it's a new group uh give them some options in there and uh, i would just keep them in their own tank try it out for like 30 days um i you may have mentioned that there was other fish in there as well. You can use dithers that may help them uh, to try to, you know, trigger some of that spawning, but I would just be patient with it, give them time and they will eventually do the thing. The main thing is just finding the right um, hide for them to go ahead and spawn in. And then now as far as pulling and rearing and raising, uh, the best thing I can mention is just check out that video that I did. Uh, so there's different things that you can do. You can let them naturally just raise up in there, but you can run some issues, as I was mentioning, because of the pheromones and hormones. But as long as you keep up with it, uh, yeah, they're not they're not difficult uh, species uh, to breed when you're talking just your common ancestors. All right. Uh, let's see. Don't make it fun of me for young. Because have you ever watched? Well, you probably watched at least one of my live streams. Yeah. I you always, always yawn. yawn. Yeah. They always yawn. Well, I nerd out too. Oh. Yeah, I go into like. Well, no, no, no I'm not running because of you. No, I'm just, I'm just tired. Um. All right. So let's see. Thanks, Candy. So again, thank you guys very much. All the moderators dropping the links. Definitely check it out. And yeah, so. Any last words, and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I think I've seen Ken. I don't know if he took that off or. Oh, is Ken here? Yeah, I've seen him over. I don't know. We'll have to go say hi to him. I was going um, to put him on, on on the spot, but you guys can check it out. Radical Reefs. Is he still doing uploads? I, I very, very little. But he does still do yeah, it. He does. Radical Reefs. Check it out. Hey, KG, if, if you want to convince your parents to have let you have more tanks, um, the secret is convince them to let you have a big tank. 
And then once once you get through that big tank, tell them that you want to get, you know, five smaller tanks to get rid of the big tank. And it's the same gallonage, but it's more tanks. Then you can usually convince them that way. And once you get to a certain point, they'll just stop caring with how many tanks you have. Yeah. Um, or you can just convince them like it's a it's a good idea. Like maybe you just want to breed more stuff. Um, maybe you show them that you're turning into a little business and they want to encourage you. Um, maybe you do a lot of water changes on it and keep up with it. And it's teaching you responsibility. Um, there's plenty of ways you can word it that parents will be like, yeah, that makes sense. And so, uh, so just try some different things. Uh, Bogwater Aquatics is wondering with regard to reducing the <laughs> overall general hardness without affecting um, the overall carbonate hardness and pH level. So I'll let Ooh. you. I'm gonna let you. Wow, that. that's a that's a doozy there. So to actually reduce GH without reducing KH is it, I would say is it is probably isn't impossible. Um, but like I wouldn't know how to do it. And so what I would say is reduce your overall GH and KH, and then you can add KH back into it. So like baking soda is a form of KH that you can add in. Uh, a long uh, or a little bit goes a long way. And so what I would suggest is adding like baking soda to a glass of water and then slowly just putting water in once it's fully dissolved. And then you can kind of increase your GH or your KH that way. And then by adding the RO waters, reducing your GH. Um, <clears throat> the big thing is not mixing it inside of your tank because I've made that mistake before. Whatever you do, always do it outside the tank and then add it back into the tank. Because if you start having changes of parameters like that in your main tank, uh, things are going to get stressed out and it's going to eventually kill them. Um, like I used to <laughs> I used to just add straight RO water to the tank and then add my remineralizer to the tank. Yeah. And I had no idea why I was killing everything. And then one day it just clicked. Sure. Um, but it's just you know stupid things like that. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, just do some control testing. Again, each little ecosystem, as I always talk about here on the channel, is what what happens to one, you could have try to duplicate the other, and you can still have some swing. So, again, you just got to test it out, test out various methods. Um, but, yeah, I was going to have, uh, if Ken wants to, I was going to have him. Hey, Ken! For, for Sills one, Ken to pop on here. So. He's in his soccer stuff. He probably just got back from his game. Did you want to get on the live stream, buddy? Come on, dude. We want you on here. Did you? But you look like a million dollars. Okay. No, he doesn't want to get on. He's all sweaty. But hey, we sorry gotta, for we so. We gotta give away a T-shirt. All right. So what I'm gonna do is with this, the easiest way I can do it. Um, let's run it for. Because I want to see how many people I actually engage at this point. Uh, we did mention it further on because I, I want to know how much. Th this is a true test. We can look at analytics all the time. I'm just wondering overall watch time. My retention in general is pretty decent. But live streams, you know how it is. A lot of times people just throw them on. They listen to it in the background. There isn't really visually much that we're showing. So what I will do is I will populate and generate um, in the comments section. So not here in chat. But after this is processed and uploaded here on the YouTube channel, I'll go ahead, we'll run it for a week. And what, I just want you to tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about the hobby, um, and then make sure that you're not doing duplicate responses. Just don't go in there and just start spamming. Just please leave one comment. I will add the criteria that needs to be followed down in the description as well. And then what I'll do like a week, from today, I'll go ahead and set it later on once I get home. Like I said, I'm like five and a half hours from home. So either later tonight or tomorrow, uh, I'll go ahead, make sure all the information is there for you guys, deadlines, what you need to do. And um, I let's just do US only. I know it sucks for those outside the US. I've done quite a few um, last year. I did quite a few uh, giveaways even outside the US. So. Um, I, I apologize for those. Eventually, I will do another giveaway uh, internationally. So this is U.S. only, and then I'll just do a live stream. I'll schedule it. Uh, so, and then, then I'll just go ahead and select a winner that way. And let's make it to where you guys have to be on that live stream. Like I said, I will schedule a live stream here on my channel, and I will go ahead and then do a random generator, and I'll do that live. And anybody that's been following me knows I've done that quite a bit 
where I just do like a random generator. It's pretty common uh, for content creators. I feel like personally it's like the easiest way to do it and try to do it right now. It just gets oh, too, yeah. it gets too cluttered. Um, there's really no good way to do it when you're live to make yeah, it really fair. Like to make it fair, I want to give you guys enough time. And if anybody's catching this in the replay, it gives them the, the opportunity to also enter in as well. So, um, but yeah, I appreciate it very much, man. It was definitely I always enjoyed. It was one of those things I I couldn't come all the way to Ohio without stopping by and saying hello. Um, I'm gonna be heading the road here shortly, heading back home. Uh, thank you again, Candy, Priscilla, uh, Brendan, um, Pam, all the moderators. I'm, I know I'm missing other ones here. That's just the ones that are standing out right now. So any last words uh, for the uh, the audience here on YouTube? Ooh. Ooh. Last I'm words. On the spot. That is a lot. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of something really, really powerful to say. All right. So I'll just say this. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, always much love for me, and I'm sure Jeremy as well. Um, yeah, we appreciate I'll... you guys subscribing, watching, being a part of the community. Because um, if you guys weren't here, me and Jeremy wouldn't be here. And so, uh, so we Absolutely. definitely appreciate the support, and, uh, and we love you guys. And and uh, yeah, have a great Sunday. I couldn't say it better myself. And as always, you guys stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on, happy fishing, and we'll talk to you guys right back here later, guys. On the next one.